Today we are going to talk about functions in Python. So let's begin with function introduction. Functions are nothing but a block of code that performs a specific task. Think about them as being a dishwasher. So the way dishwasher works is you give dirty dishes as an input to the dishwasher. When you press the button, internally it will perform some tasks such as adding detergent and water, cleaning the dishes, and then drying them out. In the end, what you get is clean dishes as an output. So functions are also similar. They take something as an input, then depending on what kind of code you write within a function, it will perform some task. And in the end, you get something else back as an output. Now, why functions are needed? Functions makes your code more modular and more readable. Let me explain this by giving a real life example. So if you have two lists and you want to perform summation of these two individual lists, how do you do that if you're not using functions? I'm going to initialize uh, these two lists and I'm just going to call these two lists as Tom's expense list and Joe's expense list. So these are the expense list from two different people. And what we are trying to do here is find the total of each individual list. Okay, so without using the functions, what you will do is you will create a variable called total and then you will write a for loop to go over each of these items and in the end, you will print a total. I'm just copying and pasting the code from a different document just to save time on recording. So uh, here, what you just did is you went over each of the items from Tom's expense list and you added it to this variable. Okay, now, to find the total of Joe's expense list, you will do the same thing. So I'll just copy paste this code and I will replace this guy with Joe's expense list because the second thing you're doing is printing the list of total expense of Joe's list. And you will say, these are total expenses incurred by Joe. Okay, let's run the program. Excellent. So when you ran it, you got the total expenses from for both the people. The problem with this code is that you are repeating these three lines of code at two places. Imagine if you had 100 such lists, you will have to repeat these three lines 100 times and that's very cumbersome. We can encapsulate this particular code into a function. So now let me write the same code using a function. So I'm going to remove this thing here. We will still keep our list and I will start writing a function. So the way you write the function is first you type def. Def is a special keyword that tells Python that I'm going to write a function. So calculate total is the function name and exp is input. Here you will create local variable called total and you will iterate through the items in exp and by the way these lists we are when we call this function we are going to pass these two lists as an input so exp variable will have a list here you will say total equal to total plus item and in the end you return a total okay and the way you call this function is you create another variable called Tom's total and you call this function with Tom's list as an input. And then for Joe's total, you create one more variable called Joe's total and you again call this function calculate total and you pass Joe's expense list as an input. Now it's the time to print the uh, total. So Tom's total expenses is Tom's total. 
and I can just copy paste this code and I can say juice total expenses is juice total okay let me run it and see what happens excellent I got the same result okay now let me explain the way this worked is when you call calculate total here by passing this list as an input what happens is this list gets passed over into exp exp is a local variable for this function okay and this much is a function body and the body of the function is defined by this indentation you see this extra tab here so whenever that ends or whenever you return the function body will end here you will perform some operations you will create a local variable you will iterate it to the items and in the end you will return so this thing total here is called a return value and you return a value from a function by using using this return keyword okay so these are the basic components to remember number one is a function argument number two is a function return value and this whole thing is called function okay so if you compare with this again with the dishwasher example just imagine this is a dishwasher then this is an input to the dishwasher which is your dirty dishes and these three lines is the set of steps that dishwasher is performing like adding water and detergent washing the dishes drying them out etc in the end this return statement returns you the clean dishes which is an output okay so that was a quick comparison with a dishwasher now let's work on another example and this one is going to be very very simple let's say you want to do sum of two numbers you can do it using a function so I can write a function let me erase this code I can write one more function called sum and a comma b so a, a and b are the arguments to this function here you create a local variable total equal to zero and or rather total equal to a plus b and you can just return it return total okay and you can say sum five and six okay now tell me what will be the output of this program so when I run it as you all expect I'm going to get 11 because 5 plus 6 is 11 what happened here is uh, let me debug the program and then I'll explain how it worked I will put a breakpoint at these two places I will say debug okay and I will say okay next so it first define a function it we have not called the function yet that's why it didn't go here okay we are calling function here so when you say go inside the function uh, let me see which one this one is tap into so tab into next as you see here a has value 5 and b has value 6 whatever you pass from here this guy will get those values and when you say next total is 11 and now we are returning this total so this total will now get placed into this n variable next so as you see n still doesn't have any value when you say next at that time n gets 11 okay if you check console we got total 11 now the way we are passing function arguments here is by order so if you want to pass something in a you put that value here as a first value and b you put that as a second value let me print those values here i will say print a is a then uh, let me just copy this a couple of time uh, b is my b and i will also print total before returning 
So my total is total. Okay, let me run it. So if I run it, A is 5, B is 6, total is 11. And total inside function, inside function. This is total outside function, okay? Now, what if I want to pass B first and then A a second? So you can use something called name argument. So if you say B, explicitly say B equal to five and A equal to six, what's gonna happen is then it will not go by order. These are called named arguments and the other ones were not, they were not named arguments. They were basically using the order. Uh, let's run this. Voila, so A is six, B is five. If you have a long list of arguments and you want to be specific about which argument has which value, you can use these named arguments. Otherwise, you can just use plain order. Cool, okay, next item is global versus local variables. So until now, all these variables that we created here, A, B, total, these are local to this function. If you try to access these variable here, for example, let me print total. So we have defined total variable here and all I'm trying to do is print total. But you see this red line, it says, okay, let me run it. It says name error, name total is not defined, which means total is not visible outside the function body. Total is only visible inside the function body and my function body is this much, okay? So what happens if I have one more variable called total outside? So if I have total equal to zero and if I say total outside, the function is total, okay? Let's see what happens. Total was zero here and here we assigned a plus b value. We are printing total inside the function and then outside the function. Let's run it. Great, so total inside the function was 11, but outside it is zero. So you see this variable and this variable, although their names are different, their names are same, their values are different because those variables essentially are different. This one is called a global variable because it is outside any function. It can be accessed anywhere. This one we created locally. So it is a local variable. Okay, let's now talk about default arguments. I will just revert this back to what it was originally. Here we are passing two arguments to the function. What if I don't want to pass the second argument? If you don't want to pass second argument and if you run the program, it won't run because it will say it is missing the argument, okay? But sometimes you may have a default value for the second argument. So I'm making an assumption in my code that if my function caller doesn't pass me an argument, assume it to be zero. So when you say this, Inside of your fun function argument, when you assign a specific argument a value, that becomes a default value for that argument. So now if you run it, it will work fine. What this is saying is, if you don't pass me the second argument, then I'm going to assume it to be zero. But hey, you are free to pass the second argument. If you pass this, imagine what's gonna happen. It's not gonna make that zero. Let me run it and prove it. Excellent, so you see here B is eight and this didn't have any effect. So this will have any effect only if you don't pass the argument. Okay, we want to conclude our session by uh, covering document strings uh, real fast. Documents and strings are nothing but a way to document your function. This function was very simple. It was just doing a sum of two numbers, but you might have a big complicated function. In that case, you want to write some documentation to explain the color of that function on what that function is doing. What does it expect as an input and what does it expect as an output? So the way you write documentation string is you use triple quotes like this. And by default, pycharm is 
giving these default documentation but if you're not using PyCharm, if you're using IDLE or something you have to manually type all these things in okay so let me just remove these things and manually type it in so this function takes two arguments which are integer numbers and it will return some of them as an output so when you do this if someone is calling your function if he reads these lines he will he will get an idea on what this function is doing so this is called a documentation strings and it is a multi-line strings started and ended with triple quotes all right we cover pretty much everything about functions uh, don't forget to work on these sample exercises at the end of ev my every video i give these sample exercises to, for you to work upon and these are extremely useful and it will help you a lot in your learning thank you